is All That Divides by English prog group, metal group Black Peaks. It is their sophomore album, it's their second studio album, and it's a follow-up to the hugely successful and hugely popular debut, Statues. Now, I missed Statues. I've got it, I haven't listened to it yet. I, it completely passed me by because for ages I kept getting mixed up with Black Keys and had no idea why everyone was going mental over them. This is because I am a grade A fucking moron and B, every new, well, every band at some point has had black in their name. Like, just trying to find these to listen to them again to write a review. You type, you go, like, search for black in iTunes. I've just got a swell of black something bands. And it's fucking annoying. Black Label Society, Black Sabbath, uh, Black Audio, even though it's spelled differently. The whole idea of it is just so fucking infuriating. And another reason why I could never really me with this album well like this yeah with band sorry it's because they got hit with the prog metal label and prog metal for me is so difficult because i have such a short attention span which people might be picking up on with how i present this but there we go i have such a short attention span and i hate having to listen for a seven minute song which has got somehow a five minute long keyboard solo with a 20 minute long guitar solo and then the drummer just needs to make sure everyone remembers he's there and the basses can go off for a fag and like dream theater for me is possibly one of the worst things that's ever happened just because they are all such fantastic 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 musicians but my short attention span my suspected oh my parents autism i love that short pacey punk rock feel of music where it's just like you're in you've got your two minutes you're out everyone's blown away everyone's having a great time so i flick this on and oh my fucking god your script from start to finish the fact they opened up the they had the balls to open up with can't sleep fucking riffs faux days it is just insane there's no fiddly guitar solo um sorry there's no fiddly keyboard solo there's no guitar solo that feels like it's over saying it's welcome everything is precise everything is in moderation to how much it needs to be and you're j i'm just you put the so first song on and you kind of feel that you have to listen to the entire thing just to take it all in electric fires is everything everything i've ever needed from a song it's got a lo-fi beginning, which I was saying before, with Last Farewell and The Weeknd. Lo-fi vocal um, performance that keeps coming in and out, but mostly there in the beginning. It's got a big melodic break, which ends up building up to a big, big sounds getting big, big chorus. And then just, oh my god, the fucking chorus of the song itself. I love that clean build up and then the huge huge like scream crescendo and it's just ah oh, electric fire might be one of my favorite songs of the year i'm not going to try and do like a top 20 songs uh list i went through my list the other day i've listened to nearly 130 albums this year i'm not going to do that um at its most melodic this album can easily go toe to toe with your Biffy Clyros or your Foo Fires. And when it's at its angriest, it's rubbing shoulders with Gijira and Ishan. It is. It's every bit that's. There's got bits that sound like it's contemporaries on both levels. Like there's parts on it with his vocal performance why I thought I was listening to, listening to Leprous, which is a Norwegian prog rock band. And they do the backing, they're the backing band for Ashan every time he performs live. You've got swells in there that sound like um, Devon Townsend as well, with just like the wall of sound hitting you. And as much as they sound like people on the like similar vein, they're inspired, you can sound, you can hear where they're inspired by the likes of, again, Devon Townsend, Mastodon, Ishan. There's even bits in there that sound like this OG Muse back when they were good. And just the. The way Muse did it back in the day, where they had like a song like Plug In Baby is such a weird song to hear, but it made such a mainstream, 
whole for the band. And there's bits on there where you could easily hear, like take bits of it and put it on the radio now and have it just on, I don't know what music channels are live anymore. Is the box still going? We'll say the box. Black Peaks could be on the box with some of the bits in this album. Yeah, God, am I showing my age? I don't think so. And this, ah, oh, I cannot get over how much I enjoy this album. And it, this, albums like this make me so frustrated why you hear the argument that rock is dead. Like Gene Simmons has been saying it for years. Ollie Sykes said it last week, or Ollie Sykes said it was boring last week. If you look outside your own personal little bubble, you will see that rock music in rock music in the UK is doing fucking fine. Like take a band like every level as well. So you've got Black Peaks, which is easily break into a mainstream audience and be on like your I say quote unquote average radio stations and all your normal quote again quote unquote normal TV channels easily have on this on there. Like I said, it can be along with your Biffy Clyros and your Foo Fighters. But you've got thing out bands like Rolo Tomasi, Palm Reader, Conjurer, Milk Tea, Marmoset. Judas Priest have been going for nigh on forty fucking years, and their album this year puts most metal bands to fucking shame. Out of nowhere, they've made one of the best albums since... Well, some people have said the best album since British Steel. I cannot say st st at the moment. British Steel. And you'll just... That's just the UK. You look at... Outside of that, you've got... Like, Zealand Arda have made, has made one of the most interesting and... Just fucking weird, but in a good way, albums... That's been seen in ages, combining two genres of metal, two genres of music that should not be put together, and just going ah fuck it, why not? But again, outside of the UK, you've got Turnstile, you've got like I said before, Kane Hill, A Perfect Circle, like Powerwolf. For some reason, as people were saying, like one of the biggest albums of the year, Behemoth, like bringing. Black metal into the mainstream for fuck's sake. I mean, come on. You cannot say that rock music is struggling at all when you've got bands like all the ones I've just said and you've got an album like All That Divides satisfying the Grieve Nation that likes it when people are screaming at them but also could break into the mainstream and satisfy Cindy from around the corner. If you're a fan of Excluding that round, like I said, if you've got like the slightest inkling into interesting music, not just like alt rock or prog or anything like that, if you just like interesting, good music, you owe it to yourself to find this album because I think there's something in here for every kind of musical fan. Um, again, like I keep bringing back to um, Biffy Clyro, I'm so out of touch with what's on your normal music channels at the moment, but. You if you like the Biffy Clyro, if you like the Muses, uh, Periphery, Ishan, like I said, a little bit of Mastodon there, you will really, really enjoy this album. Even if you don't, if you hate all those bands, I still think you'll fucking love this album because it's so good. And yeah, it's just, if you find someone who says rock is dead, you can beat them to death with this album. Or any of those albums, uh, any albums from those bands I said before. So you roll it to Masters, Palm Readers, Conjurer, Marmoset, Milk Teeth, etc. 